Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the truth is marching on indeed in the heart of everyone that is listening to me and watching this broadcast right now. Thank you, precious Lord. We receive our daily bread right now. Oh, we bless you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for revelation. Yokes are being destroyed in the minds of people. Burdens are being removed right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Oh, I've, I've told, told you a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, if you're watching this broadcast for the first time, hey, come on, go, go to YouTube. Get all the other messages. Get, just go, 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 go back and get them. Praise God. You need them. And, and, and subscribe to our page and put on the notification button. Praise God. So, we're in verse 15. He says, but I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things that it should be done unto me, for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in void. Now Paul said something very striking here. He said, look, I've not used this thing. No, no, I, I, I can actually ask you for money. I have the right to ask you for money. Because I have sown spiritual things into your life, so I have the right to do, do, do that. But he said, I don't do it. And he says, even now I'm writing these things to correct you because you're giving to some other people, but you're not giving to us. He said, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm not doing this now so that you begin to give to me. No, you don't. Why? Look at what he says. He says, for it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in vain. What's his glory? His glory is in it that God takes care of him. That is his testimony. His testimony is his glory in see so he says i'm not going to let any man make my glory in void and then he said something he said i would rather die now that part is not a righteous thing to say you know we we, we must be careful the kind of utterance that comes out of our mouths i need you, i need you to know this you see sometimes the lord told me this you know sometime back he said that's why lots of my children who do righteousness are broke why it is not because God has not blessed them, but their confession keeps them away from the blessing of God. So what confession? You hear a Christian say, instead of me to steal, I would rather be poor. Uh-huh. Now, now, they think they are saying something righteous. Now, I will never steal. Even if I have to be poor, I will never steal. Now, but they don't know that it is a confession. Now, look at the statement. Instead of me to steal, I will remain poor. Okay. His confession is steal and get rich. Don't steal and stay poor. And he's not going to steal, so he's going to stay poor. Did you get that? Hey, but God is blessing. No, he has already said he will stay poor. So what is he supposed to say? I'll tell you. I will not steal because God meets all my needs. <laughs> God. So why would he have to say Paul? He's trying to say how he, will, he wants to enforce that statement. No, you enforce that statement by putting it to the honor of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way to enforce the statement. He said, you know why I don't steal? Or why? It would be too dangerous for me to steal because I have no reason to. Everything I want, I turn to the Lord and he gives it to me. He supplies all my needs according to his riches. He, he is my shepherd. I don't lack anything. I don't want anything, praise God. Ah, well, 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 everybody is still in a yes because they don't know God, but I know him. Now, when you say things like that, God is honored and he sees to it that he fulfills your word, his word in your life. But when you say, I would rather die than then you've invited death to yourself. I remember there's the devil out there who's looking for every reason to accuse you. Why would God let him? Because he understands the principle. Jesus said it, by your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. So why should you let condemnation into your life? Because of your word. Why don't you bring justification to your life? So you say, I don't steal because God meets my need. Now, the Lord says, yes, he's upholding my word 
I bless him. I have to respond to that. I would rather die than beg or than steal. I would rather be poor than steal. Where is God in that? It's self-righteousness. It is. And, and you're broke now. Yeah, you're telling your children. You know, you know, you know, children, daddy, how come all the years of your working, you didn't get it? No. See, because see, let me tell you the truth. See, all those people that their parents are rich, I know what they are doing, you know. But me, I told myself, you see this heaven? I want to make heaven. So I will not steal. So you didn't know the faith way. But God is raising up a people who will honor the Lord with their words and truth. So, so, so Paul's making this statement here. He says, it's better for me to die than that, my, that man should make my glory in vain. He, says, he shouldn't have said that. See, I'm telling you this because the Lord has spoken to me concerning it. For though, verse 16 now, chapter 9, verse 16, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid on me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. See, he says, if I do this thing, what's do what? Preach the gospel willingly. He says, I have a reward. If I preach the gospel willingly, I have a reward. But if I preach it against my will, see, now, now how can someone preach the gospel against his will. There are lots of people like that. And then they miss their reward. They don't realize it. Remember Isaiah said something. I think Isaiah 1, 9 says, If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Those two ingredients have to be there. Willingness and obedience. I say how? Because someone can be obedient yet not willing. Oh, if, if, if not that God told me to preach, I know what I would have been. If not that I'm a preacher, if not that I have to do this, I know what. Oh, it's God, though. It's God. You are not willing. You will not eat the good of the land, though you are preaching. You've got to open your heart and accept the truth. Oh, this is what God wants me to do. You know, you know that's how you make it. The Bible says, let the unrighteous man forsake his ways, his thoughts, and the... Um, let the wicked forsake his, his thought and the righteous man his ways and let him turn unto the Lord. So you had your thoughts fixed on, I want to do this, I want to do this. And then the Lord said, this is what I want you to do. And then you take time and you reason. He said, God is wise. God is wise. I accept his will for my life. And I love it. Actually, because he knows better than me. Praise God. And then now it becomes your will. Why are you doing this? Oh, because I love doing it. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. And, and the Lord commanded me to do it. Why? Is the Lord do? It's God that told me to do it. So that's why I'm doing it. See, it's just like loving people. You know, God tells you, you must love that person. Say, okay. Because, okay, take a gift to that person. Mm, it's God that says I should bring this gift to. If not, now you will give that person the gift. You will not see the harvest of that gift. You know why? You didn't give it willingly. Even though you obeyed. So no judgment will come on you. But you see, your willingness is what is going to bring a reward. So you find that God says, go and apologize to that person. Okay, don't go empty and they take a gift. No, you say, okay. And then you, you, you go around, you, you buy a good gift, you, something that you, oh, this is good for this person. <laughs> and then you, hey, I know, you know, we were not in good terms the other day. But, but I just want to apologize, you know. Maybe I got out of line, but I think that's not the right way to leave. So I came to apologize. Oh, really? Okay, I'm sorry too. Hey, you know, while I was coming, I saw this gift for you. I thought just to bring it to you. Oh, thank you very much. Now you leave that place. See, two things you will achieve. You have brought peace to your life and that person's life. And secondly, the gift that you gave will open a door for blessing in your life. But if you don't do it willingly, no reward for you. The same thing with preaching the gospel. You must do it willingly. Praise <laughs> God. So he says, what then, verse 18, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Did you see that? He said, that's what I want to be rewarded with. 
That's what I want to see. That I've got enough to do the gospel, do everything that God wants me to do. And I charge nobody anything. All right, let's go on and says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I may gain the more. Notice, he says, I'm free from all men. That's what he says. He says, though I be free. And that's what God does when you walk by faith and you trust God. He makes you free from all men. Because, you see, men have a way of putting you in bondage. I'm telling you the truth. If you want to follow men to do the work of the ministry, if you want to follow men, they will control your life. They will put you in bondage. You will not see an escape route. If you want to preach a message, say, ah, if I preach this message, that brother that I used to give, the, the brother that gives the most, yeah, it will offend him more. Let me leave. Let, let me just avoid this message. Ah, come on. You're in bondage to man. You're in bondage. Paul says, I'm free, praise God, from all men. And the Bible says concerning Jesus, he knew what was in man, so he refused to give himself to man. He knew. Let me tell you this truth. Honor God with your life. Honor God with your ministry. He will raise the men. Praise God. And I tell you something about men. They can change their minds. <laughs> but you see, let me tell you the truth. When, when you walk with the Lord, and you see, just like what I was telling you yesterday, when you, you, when you so spiritually, you confuse the devil the more. You know why? He doesn't know where your next blessing is going to come from. He doesn't know where the, where the Lord's, who the Lord's going to command to give to you. So there is nothing. So someone saying, you know, it's like the devil is attacking the rich people in my church. You shouldn't have rich people here. All your church members should be rich. Oh yeah, they should be rich. As long as they can hear the voice of God, they are rich, man. They are rich. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. Because that person who you think is poor, by the voice of God, he can enter into one abundant blessing the next minute. Just a voice away. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. All right. So, verse 20. And unto the Jews I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I, may, I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Now you understand what he's saying here? He said, I, I flow with everybody. That's just simply what he's saying. I flow with everybody. Why? I have a purpose. He's not just flowing with everybody. I have a purpose. What's that purpose? To, by all means, gain some. So there's someone, there's someone amongst these people that don't have the law, don't, don't follow the law. There's someone amongst these weak people. So let me, let me just go, hey, hi, hi, I'm fine. You know, sometimes, you know, you say, ah, you, know, you, you go to some places to preach and then you want to be like a preacher. You wear your suits and then you go in there if I know what's happening, they, they ah, who's this one? Who's this one? But when you, even your dressing, when you dress, you know, free like them, say, hey, excuse me. They're, okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know your face, but it doesn't look so far from us. <laughs> Praise God. And then you, you begin to talk like them. And something is in your heart. I'm looking for how to win some of them by all means. Now, these are the kind of things we do for the gospel. <laughs> Praise God. Now, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I, for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. I'm doing all this because I want to be a partaker with you. So I don't stand up there and say, I'm the preacher. You go do the work. I do the work also, praise God. You know, like a preacher who doesn't visit, who doesn't go out for evangelism. He sends people. You do the work also. Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry, praise God. And that's the truth. It's in the work that you fulfill your ministry. I've learned a lot of things doing counseling with people. I've learned a lot of things praying for people. I've learned a lot because while I'm praying, the voice of the Lord will come to me concerning that issue and that's how it works so get your hand to the job and begin to learn from the from the spirit of god 
in the name of Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, have the best day ever. Bye-bye.